Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today we're going to look at a band that I'm surprised I haven't actually covered before because they are one of my favourite bands it's Opeth now they've recently uh, released a new track from their uh, upcoming album and yeah I'd have a look now anybody out there who doesn't know who Opeth are first of all where have you been hiding and second of all, here's a little information for you. Opeth is a Swedish progressive metal band from Stockholm, Sweden, formed in 1989. Uh, the group has been through several um, changes in band members um, and have basically replaced every single member of the original band. Every single original band member is no longer in there. Um, Lead vocalist and guitarist Michael Ackerfeld um, has remained Opeth's main driving force since the departure of the original vocalist David Eisberg uh, in 1992. Now the band cons consistently like incorporates uh, progressive uh, folk, blues, classical, and jazz influences into their music. If you've ever heard Opeth's music, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Um, and a lot of their tracks are normally quite long. Um, a lot of the tracks have elements of death metal in there as well, um, especially the earlier stuff. Unfortunately, as of late, the last three albums have taken out the half death growl vocals, which is really a shame because Michael Ackerfeld is one of the best in the business at doing the death metal growls and clean vocals and going between the two, but having taken out the death growls, in my opinion, the last three albums have actually been pretty bad. Um, now, um, to this point, Opeth have released 12 studio albums, three live DVDs and three live albums, um, two box sets, um, so yeah, you know they've had they've had quite a lot of um, they've had quite a lot of um, work out there. And I was actually lucky enough a few years ago. I went and saw Opeth for their twentieth anniversary gig, um, Evolution XX, at the Royal Albert Hall which is a three hour gig where they played Blackwater Park in its entirety and then one track off every album chronologically up until uh, Watershed which was the last album they did with um, with actual um, harsh vocals on. Um, it was a damn good gig, possibly one of the best gigs I've ever been to. But anyway, I'm waffling on. Um, so. The track we're looking at today is a track called Dignity. Now, as I understand it, they've actually released this track in Swedish as well, um, which is something I've not heard from Opeth in a very, very long time. I can't can't remember if in their really, really early stuff they did some Swedish vocals as well. But um, you don't you don't hear that very often from Opeth at all. Um, but anyway, this track's called Dignity. I'm, quite intrigued to see if this is any better than anything off the last three albums because like I said I found the last three albums slightly disappointing um, but anyway we'll have a look uh, I've been going on for over four minutes now so um, let's let's jump to it shall we so Dignity by Opeth
I'm just going to pause that for a minute. Now, this is actually possibly one of the best tracks I've heard from Opeth in a couple of years. I mean, Cusp of Eternity was an okay track, but it wasn't brilliant. This one is a bit better than I've heard, like I said, like, than I've heard from them in a while. And, um, it appears to be quite a deep track as well. Um, and the video. The video is done by the people who did the video for Cellar Darling when they did like Insomnia and the um, the opening track, which now it's done by the same people. The art style is exactly the same, and it's brilliant because I actually I really like that artist. I'd love to find out exactly who it is because I'm a big fan of their style. But anyway, um, musically as always, Opeth's music is fantastic. You know, it's made even more impressive when you realise the fact that Michael Eckfeld taught himself how to play guitar. You know. You ask him any of the chords, he probably won't be able to actually tell you what the chords are, but he can play them. But anyway, it opened up with a bit of spoken word which came from like the TV on the in the video. Now from what I can guess, I think in the video it's actually spoken in Swedish. I'm not sure, but I couldn't actually understand any of the things that were said. But I do have a translation here. It says, at a year's end, many will experience a feeling of melancholy, melancholy, considering that which will never return. To others, it is a moment of anticipation for the possibilities of conquering the new. Others yet will experience a concern facing a change that provides uncertainty and possible deterioration. All of these motions are each in their own understandable. Someone said the other day that we reside in the great time of rupture. There we go. What that has to do with the song, I'm not sure. But the actual song itself seems to have slight religious um, meaning behind it. And it seems to be talking about outdated, um, outdated things in religion. And it seems to be mostly focusing towards things like um, arranged and forced marriages and stuff like that. And uh, it's very interestingly worded because it opens, Prince of Lies is on his knees, holy rites spreading the disease. By his side a youthful girl, wedlocked force unfurls. She is young, far too young, far too young. So just that opening verse there speaks volumes, you know. This young woman girl is being forced to marry this guy and she is way too young for this sort of thing and this happens in well many many countries um, it carries on can we dictate a life with dignity foul agenda corrupt in secrecy oh no 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 one false prayer wielding blasphemy Price the spirit as a wanted property. Oh no, 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 no. So can we dictate a life with dignity? You know, because in situations of this, like forced marriage and arranged marriage and stuff like that, the woman is seen as a object, as property. So can we dictate a life with dignity? That's like the man telling this woman how she should behave, but... In that, in essence, strips her of all dignity because she is no longer a free sentient being. She is a piece of property that is under someone else's control. And one, one false prayer wielding blasphemy, priceless spirit as a wanted property. So, again, like people sell their daughters for like huge amounts of money. You know, you can marry my daughter. Just pay me X amount of money, you can have her. You know, the, the girl gets no say in this matter. You know, it's, so it's quite a interesting topic and very interesting in the way it's worded. Let's carry on.
There we go. That was Dignity by Opeth. Now, that's, I don't like the way that that track ended. Uh, it seemed like it was just, I don't know, it seemed like the song hadn't actually finished and just sort of cut itself randomly. I, I, I didn't like the way that it ended. And it seems that I paused it like right before the end as well. Because um, the song carried on. Congratulations to the five men of affairs. There was a purpose with this life. Insinuations that if she holds anything dear, then it motivates submission in his lair. He is waiting for darkness. He opens the door. He is slithering. Um, I mean, I, th I think this basically, it, it, it almost covers pretty much all religion, you know, there is so much corruption within religion itself, you know, like the Catholic Church, there's all these priests that are molesting children and stuff like that, you know, th this could essentially um, work in that favour too, saying things like, you know, by his side a youthful girl, she is young, far too young, etc., you know, it could apply there. It could apply to so many different religions in the fact that there is corruption within every single one of them, whereas they are always claiming that they're like righteous people who are like beyond reproach, that they are, you know, amazing people that are like all good and brilliant like that. And really, it's a whole load of rubbish. Um, see, now for the most part, though, I did like the song for the most part. Musically, it was. What you expect from Opeth, they are brilliant musicians, fantastic. You know, um, and the actual vocal performance on, on this track was slight, was it was good. You know, Mikkel Ackerfeld does have an amazing voice, but I do really miss the harsh vocals, the growls. I mean, he, he did take his voice almost to the edge of it in this track, where he almost sounded like he was. It sounded like he was almost going to tip into it, but he didn't quite. But it is something that is really missing, I think, from the last three Opeth albums, and most likely from this one as well. And, you know, like I said, whilst he has a great voice, I think essentially that's a big component that he's missing from them, and that's why the last three albums haven't been that good. I mean, obviously some people like them. There are some tracks on them that I quite like, but overall... They've not been as good as the likes of Blackwater Park, Still Life, Ghost Reveries, Damnation, Deliverance, you know. They, 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 they've sort of like completely left that behind, and it's a, it's a shame, because that was like the, the golden age of Opeth. That was like the part where they were absolutely fantastic. They were at the peak of their game. They were phenomenal. And they've gone and left all the sort of death metal vocals behind and it's a shame because like I said he was brilliant at moving between both you know he could be singing you know clean vocals and then just sort of gradually fade and rise into a growl and it was brilliantly done and he, like I said he was one of the best and it, it's all gone and I think in a way that also loses some of the emotion of the tracks um, because that's another thing he did so well, was use his vocal performance to portray the emotion within the track. And, again, I think, you know, the tracks are missing that now, because whilst, like I say, his clean vocals are brilliantly done, it loses something in the sort of emotion of the track. But I could go on critiquing that forever, so uh, I will leave that. As it is. Like I said though, the track was good, the video was brilliant, I absolutely love the video style, it's phenomenal. Um, but I'm going to leave that as it is. If anybody would like to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so by all means. Drop a comment in the comment section below, or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, or you could even message me on my Patreon, where you could also help to support me, um, so that I can make more videos in the future, and possibly even improve the quality of said videos. Um, do know, if you make a suggestion, it might take me a while to get around to them, because um, I get suggested so many tracks every single day, that my list grows faster than I can record the tracks. Um, 
like for every video that I record, I get suggested another 12. Um, but I do write down every suggestion I get, so it will get done eventually. It's just going to take me a while to get around to it. <clears throat> also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter <coughs> excuse me, of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. They are a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, specifically those aimed towards the alternative um, culture. Now, yesterday was the 12-year anniversary of the death of Sophie Lancaster. 12 years to the day yesterday, Sophie Lancaster lost her life after being brutally and violently attacked for no reason. Her and her boyfriend, Rob Maltley, were violently attacked for no reason, brutally beaten, and she was kicked to death. Twelve years. I can't, I can't even believe it's been that long. It, it seems like... It doesn't seem that long ago. It seems like maybe one or two years ago, but it's been twelve years. She would have been 32. She was 20 when she lost her life. And... Um, you know, it's something that I care very passionately about. The fact that this wonderful young girl was violently attacked for no other reason than the fact that she dressed in alternative clothing and listened to alternative music. There was no other reason behind it. Yeah, and it's unacceptable, but this sort of thing happens all the time, and it needs to stop. I had a friend, right? Well, I still have a friend. Uh, who, back in 2001, was stopped in the middle of the street. And she was beaten up in the middle of the street for being off. And she was pregnant at the time. You know, this pregnant girl, just because she listened to alternative music, was beaten up in the street. It's lucky she didn't lose the child. You know. Other friends of mine have been beaten with baseball bats. I've been, I've been cornered in alleys by groups of people and had ten shades kicked out of me for no other reason than the fact that I listen to alternative music and because I wear alternative fashion. You know. But this sort of shit happens all over the world, everywhere. There was a... I can't remember the guy's name. Um, several years ago, there was a a punk um, who was in. I think he was in Texas. You know, somebody purposefully run him down in their car and drove off, and they killed this guy. I cannot remember his name, but this person who hit him got off with a suspended sentence because he was like the clean-cut jock of the college football team or whatever it was. And the fact that the person that he killed was a punk who wore a leather jacket and had a mohawk. You know, the bias towards people of the alternative community is unbelievable. You know. Just because we wear alternative fashion and listen to different music doesn't make us any less of a person. But for some reason, it seems to be a common consensus that people think that's the fact. You know. Everybody has the right to be an individual. Nobody has the right to be attacked just because they listen to something different, just because they wear something different. Everybody has the right to be an individual, and nobody has any say in whether you do or not. You know, no one has any say in what music you listen to. No one has any say in the way you dress. You dress however the goddamn hell you want. Nobody should be attacked for listening to different music. You don't attack someone for liking different TV shows and movies to you. So don't, you know, why would you attack them for listening to different music? It makes no sense. It's ridiculous. It's petty. It's pathetic. And when it comes to the point where people are losing their lives just because of the music that I listen to, things have gone way beyond ridiculous. It shouldn't be allowed to happen. It has to stop. And this is exactly what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about. They want to put an end to this. They don't want to see 
another family go through what they went through. They had to sit there for 13 days in the hospital and watch their daughter slowly die after being so brutally attacked for no other reason than being an alternative. You know, for no other reason than the fact that she liked alternative music. For no other reason than the fact that she liked to wear alternative clothing. You know, it's... It's mind-boggling that people can be that petty. But it needs to stop. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. Um, you can pop over there, find out what they're working on, find out what their uh, goal is, because they can explain it better than I can, because I, I go off on random tangents and get really wound up about it. Um, and if you can help them in any way, even something as simple as one of these Sophie wristbands. Um, they've got a whole bunch of other merchandise in their online store. Um, if you can help in any way, the smallest amount can make the biggest difference. And the sooner we bring more attention to this, the sooner we can put an end to all of this, and the sooner we can stamp out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. But I'm going to leave that as it is. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.